Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. We're about to hear from Job's second friend, known as Bildad the Shuhite. Now, this this reference to Shuhite, there's no firm agreement among scholars as to what this is saying. Uh, Generally, a Shuhite, or someone who is called the Shuhite, um, can either be a descendant of Shua or from a place called Shua. And so there's no um, consensus as to what the case was with this man. The term Shuhite only appears in Job. Uh, The term Shua does appear in Ezekiel. It's a group of, um, actually, the Babylonians or Chaldeans, uh, tribe within them are referred to as uh, from Shua. But this um, reference to Bildad the Shuhite, we're not sure why it's called that. And so it's um, somewhat unique in Scripture. But it, nevertheless, uh, he's Job's second friend about to offer his response. Job chapter 8. Then Bildad the Shuhite replied, How long will you say such things? Your words are a blustering wind. Does God pervert justice? Does the Almighty pervert what is right? When your children sinned against him, he gave them over to the penalty of their sin. But if you will seek God earnestly and plead with the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, even now he will rouse himself on your behalf and restore you to your prosperous state. Your beginnings will seem humble, so prosperous will your future be. Ask the former generation and find out what their ancestors learned. For we were born only yesterday and know nothing, and our days on earth are but a shadow. Will they not teach you and tell you? Will they not bring forth words from their understanding? Can papyrus grow tall where there is no marsh? Can reeds thrive without water? While still growing and uncut, they wither more quickly than grass. Such is the destiny of all who forget God. So perishes the hope of the godless. What they trust in is fragile. What they rely on is a spider's web. They lean on the web, but it gives way. They cling to it, but it does not hold. They are like a well-watered plant in the sunshine, spreading its roots over the garden. It entwines its roots around a pile of rocks and looks for a place among the stones. When it is torn from its spot, that place disowns it and says, I never saw you. Surely its life withers away, and from the soil other plants grow. Surely God does not reject one who is blameless or strengthen the hands of evildoers. He will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. Your enemies will be clothed in shame and the tents of the wicked will be no more. And so Bildad begins his response to Job by asking two questions of which we all uh, know the answer. And uh, the first question is, does God pervert justice? And the answer is no, God does not pervert justice. But Bildad is implying that God is just in doing what is going on uh, in Job's life to Job. And once again, God didn't afflict Job, the devil did. And so they're saying, Bildad is saying, this is God's justice in action. Well, sorry, Bildad, it's not. God's justice in action, something else. Then he poses another question. Does the Almighty pervert what is right? And the answer is, of course he does not pervert what is right. But that's not addressing Job's situation. The inference here is that Bildad's implying Job is saying that the Lord's actions are perverted. They're not right. Well, the Lord didn't do this. And so Bildad is off off base with the accusations or the responses. He goes on to take another shot at the 
cause for the death of Job's children. And friends, we've got to assume among all of the tragedies that have befallen Job, the loss of his ten children must be the the worst of all of it. And so hence, um, Eliaphaz addressed it and implied that they brought it on themselves. And here, um, Bildad does the same thing. He says, when your children sinned against him, he gave them over to the penalty of their sin. In other words, their sin brought on their death. It was not a tragic accident. It wasn't the work of the devil. It was their sin that brought it on them. That's what he's saying. That's just not true. And so Job's children uh, were victims of a tragic accident brought on by the the wilds of the devil. A windstorm blew down the walls of the house they were in, crushing them to death. But there's nothing in the text that indicates they had sinned and caused this to happen, nor was this the penalty of their sin. So this is a a false accusation Bildad is making. He continues and says, essentially, just, uh, Job, if you just repent, God will fix everything. He says in verse 5, If you will seek God earnestly and plead with the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, even now, he will rouse himself on your behalf and restore you to your prosperous state. Your beginnings will seem humble, so prosperous will your future be. Basically, he's saying, Job, if you just start living right, God will fix everything. Just start living right. Well, that's a sad comfort for someone going through these things. And then he appeals to history, saying essentially that um, uh, the things that Job is dealing with, the cause and effect, has been known for for many generations. He says in verse 8, Ask the former generation and find out what their ancestors learned. For we were born only yesterday, and we know nothing, and our days on earth are but a shadow. Will not they instruct you and tell you, talking about the, the former ones, will they not say, you know, Job, you and your kids brought this on yourselves. And uh, he continues basically saying, this is universal, Job. Everybody understands what you're dealing with, and it's your fault. Then he goes on to say some things that are true, but not applicable. Once again, verse 20, surely God does not reject one who is blameless or strengthen the hands of evildoers. Well, is that true, friends? Yes, it's true. But once again, not applicable at this point to what Job is dealing with. And he says, God will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. Your enemies will be clothed in shame and the tents of the wicked will be no more. Now, this is a true statement. It's actually prophetic. His mouth will be filled with laughter. His lips will be filled with shouts of joy. His enemies will be clothed in shame. And one of his his enemies that will be ashamed or one of his friends behaving like an enemy who will be ashamed, is Bildad the Shuhite. And so Job will ultimately be restored by the Lord. He will ultimately be delivered from this. As I mentioned in the introduction to Job, all that he's facing, all that he's dealing with is believed by scholars to have taken place in the course of one terrible, terrible year. So Bildad says um, uh, the truth mixed with fiction, mixed with lies and accusation. Lord, um, may we not be like Bildad. May we not um, say true things about you as uh, his, his questions were true. Does God pervert justice? No, of course God doesn't pervert justice. But this was not a situation of God's justice being applied to Job. This was something else altogether different with the, the devil being allowed to attack Job. Lord, we don't need to defend you. You are beyond our our need for explanation or defense. But Lord, may we not accuse you, and may we not accuse each other. Lord, help us to recognize once again that there's a lot we don't know. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. 
Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.